Hello again, everyone. Uh, this is Ray over at Cigar Climatology. I hope that uh, you are doing well. Uh, one of the things that I really like about YouTube is um, the interface of and uh, and people asking questions and looking for answers uh, for their humidor. So uh, this video today is actually uh, for Chris Lee. Uh, you can see his comment here, uh, Ray, I bought a compressor dual zone cooler and I've got such and such settings. You can read this on the sites yourself and the, when the compressor kicks in, the humidity falls below 30. Any suggestions? I've unplugged the unit and now have 72 uh, humidity at 74 temp. Should I just keep it unplugged? And th the short answer to you, Chris, is yes. Um, you have uh, you've got a couple of issues here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you few uh, through a few things and try and explain a little bit about what it is that you're dealing with so um first and foremost the the compressor wine cooler that's fine dual zone this is not good for for cigar storage um simply because it makes a very complex situation especially for those of you who are attempting to try and make wine cooler humidors. And I, I really don't want to go into a bunch of detail here, but this is, if, if you're trying to get something to actually work, this is a technical error in being, in, in purchasing this type of cooler. Um, I have the set, uh, temperature set to 65. Well, the fact is, again, like I've told many people, cigars do not need to be refrigerated. And many of these wine coolers and many of course of these uh, humidors that are based on these refrigerated systems whether they be te coolers or compressor systems they have this really they have this set point here that doesn't allow the system to run at higher temperatures and you know there's a reason for this ladies and gentlemen the reason for it is that the solid surface humidors if they have any free water in them at all um, will tend to naturally gravitate to higher RH. And that's the reason why Chris has this problem. Now I have 72 humidity and 74 temp. Um, and I'm gonna go into that also in a little bit more detail in, in a few moments. So th the reason why these manufacturers go ahead and they make these really, these really low temperatures is because they figured out that if they do not force cooling on the system because most people aren't going to live in a 65 degree home most people are going to live in a home that's more around considered to be room temperature let's say 70 to 75 degrees so this way by forcing the set point at 65 they're forcing a cooling cycle which brings us kind of back to full circle and then you get these de dehydration cycles and they pretend that the humidor actually works because they're trying to use some average well when the cooler cycles it dips way down here to some really low rh and then when it cycles off it actually goes up to some higher humidity somewhere and then when it cycles back on it comes back to this lower temperature it's it's kind of silliness and this is the reason why i really well i guess i more than suggest that um, your typical wine cooler humidor simply simply doesn't work because it, it just does not have the engineering and the technology behind it to, to make it work. So let's, uh, let's, let's get off the web here for a moment and let's go ahead and, and look at a couple of charts. Um, and this one is, this one's kind of interesting. And so uh, I thought I'd bring it up because um, it's, well, this is actually just kind of a fluke. Well, what happens is, of course, I have a day job and uh, sometimes it's been, it's, it's a while before I show up into the shop. And uh, for whatever reason, I happen to let this particular, this is a generation 13 humidor, I, I let this run out of water. So let's just, well, let's buzz down here a little bit and we can kind of take a look at things and we can see about the time that the humidor runs out of water. And here we go. It's, it's right about in this area. So. This is going to be what I'm going to p consider pretty much normal type functions, okay, on uh, on the humidor itself. And I don't have a uh, an ambient temperature reading because again I've been kind of lazy, so I, I I let the data logger expire. But I can tell you that I can see that there's quite a few cooling cycles here. There's what one, two, well almost three per hour. 
Um, so this is probably going to read somewhere in the 80s. That's, that's typical of what one of my humidors will do or this generation um, 13 humidor will do. And uh, this is going to be the warmest part of the day in the shop. It's going to be, say, the late afternoon when the sun's shining on the back wall and actually in the shop. So you can see that there's pretty much three distinct cooling cycles here. And that, uh, that represents about somewhere around in the, in the 80s, maybe mid-80s. But anyway, so what we've got here is we've got the humidor running out of water. And um, so you can kind of see that. And, and we, can, we can zoom into this a little bit. And take a look at one of these cycles and um, so what what you're seeing here is let's uh, let's grab the temperature and uh, pull it down so you can see what I'm talking about so these are obviously going to coincide coincide here this is would be a, a natural heating cycle right the the humidor just picking up in heat gradually as the day wears on and then boom the refrigeration unit is going to kick on you know somewhere right around in here and then what's going to happen is because it is refrigerated you've got water condensing on the cooling unit and then so you have this fall in relative humidity well let's talk a bit about the difference between you know Ray's system and and Chris's system in that first off you can see that I'm only getting dehydration down to uh, this is 60, this is 55, so this is 69 RH. I, I'm literally losing about 1 RH or kind of 2 RH because this is actually set slightly higher than 60. Uh, but I'm, I'm losing about 2 RH in dehydration uh, due to the fact that the cooling cycle's on. And you can also see that this span, this span is, is really, really tiny. And, uh, and that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty proud of this, how these things work. So this is not what you'd consider some kind of uh, protracted de, you know, dehydration that would really have any uh, detrimental effect to your cigars for any period of time. I mean, you can see, you're looking at my screen, this says two minutes and 31 seconds. So, um, you know, that, that's pretty cool. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. So let's go back to the hand here and, and let's continue, blah, blah, blah. So you can see the, 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 the humidor or the humidifier is continuing to dry because it's, it's actually taking it a considerable amount of time to, um, to, to come back and actually correct its, um, its, its humidity. This, this gap here is is going to get bigger and you know and bigger and bigger and bigger and of course these also have to do with temperature changes but um what eventually begins to happen is is see let's take a look at this see so what we've got is as the refrigeration kicks on now this is actually not a temperature cycle right here i can just tell them by looking at them let's look at this one for instance this is a dehydration cycle so this is an intentional cycle trying to push the, you know, the water down inside the humidor. And let's, uh, let's do something here real quick. I'll grab the arrow. So we're talking about humidity. Let's uh, kick off this grid line. And let's go ahead and put this one on. Okay, so we can just see what we're doing because now we're talking about relative humidity. Um, so this, you can see right here, this isn't really at the temperature range that I would normally get the operation of the refrigeration of the cooler, right? So this is uh, a high RH development and a response to, to high RH. So you can see that this has been pushed um, over 60 to Let's just take this over here so you can see it. So this has been pushed, say, over the 62 mark, at least by this data logger. And so this is a deliberate uh, dehydration. You can see that it doesn't really affect the temperature line too much until we get to the point where we actually require cooling again. Okay, and we could bring a line in here from, from the temperature, but I don't think we need to do that. I think this is fairly well explained. And then we see this more, you know, uh, deleterious type uh, you know, precipitous drop in relative humidity. 
And you might say to yourself, well, Ray, why, you know, why is that happening? You said that that doesn't happen. Well, it happens. It's happening because the humidifier is running out of water. Um, now, what also happens is the humidifier constantly collects water as the system warms. So if, if the humidor itself, you have to understand, isn't completely dry, and so maybe some water will actually drip into the humidifier, and that will help you know, these areas right here. And then what happens is, again, we have this drying effect of where um, eventually there's not really much condensation that ends up dripping back into the humidifier so we're not getting much help here until we get to the point where the humidifier is just pretty dry and as you can see i let it go just too long it got relatively dry and um you're going to say well what happened here well i refilled it with water and so this is where the system begins to come back to life and comes back to its normal its normal performance but uh, for Chris's sake, uh, this is what's happening to you, Chris, is you're, you're getting a high temperature somewhere along the line. This triggers your cooling. Um, your cooling kicks in, and then you get this precipitous drop in relative humidity. I don't get the really precipitous drop because there's a lot of engineering as well as programming that goes into one of my humidors. And that's one of the things that even with the humidifier not working, um, is is actually making my humidor a little bit more manageable than yours but of course this is not the way it's designed to run it's designed to run when it does have water in the humidifier so let's go kind of to a more make sure that we've got everything and and well here we go so this is kind of a more normal just a normal and where are we at this is uh, about 76 degrees Fahrenheit so you can see that the temperature is dropping over time here in 71 and this is kind of neat you can see that we're just going into dehydration cycles right here because the temperature is such that we really don't need a cooling cycle and this is a cooling cycle and then this would be just be representative of a dehydration cycle so this is the other problem that you're having Chris is that you don't have any deliberate dehydration inside of your uh, inside of your uh, humidor. So what, one of the problems that you have, Chris, is that you're, you're, the items inside your humidor are oversaturated. Okay, And um, so the first thing that I would suggest that you do is you take out all of your beaded products and um, you either bake them dry or not completely dry, but you try to remove some of the water from them because your baseline relative humidity inside your cooler is too high. Um, also inside your cooler you might have a well or some type of catch basin that will actually hold liquid water and until you purge that completely and get all the liquid water out that's what's called free water you're going to continue to have some sort of evaporation problem that's what this is this is free water evaporating from items like my my humidifier and creating this um, high RH situation which forces me in the into the dehumidification cycle okay and puts me back down into the realm of where I want to be in this uh, in this humidor which is kind of between 61 and 62 RH and again this is another refrigeration cycle you can tell them just by looking at them and we've just got more um, dehumidification cycles etc and you'll notice as the temperature begins to pick up like we're watching this red line here what happens we we get less and less of the de dehydration cycles and we get more and more of the um, cooling cycles and this again tends to bring us back full circle once more if we go back to um, the little bit of the talk that we had about the 65 Fahrenheit temperature setting on most of these wine coolers it's because if they don't force this see if they don't force this they get this naturally okay so you 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 need they need excuse me they need to force these cooling cycles so that they don't get these unintended hydration cycles and and this is all a part of engineering you know and control of your of your controlled cooler um, so here we go. Let's go down here some. Uh, now we're actually, no, we're, we're not quite to 80 degrees. We're in this high 70s here inside the shop. So you can see that these 
Uh, cooling cycles are getting more frequent. I'm getting well, a little less than three an hour, uh, just about you know two, maybe two and three quarters of an hour, depending upon where they fall. Um, three an hour will generally net me at it somewhere around 80 degrees Fahrenheit and, uh, and a little bit more. Uh, so this is just kind of the humidor doing its thing. One of the other things that I've uh, pulled into this chart for just for the sake of amusement is um, this guy. And this is, these actually represent, um, this is, this is grains of water per pound of dry air. So this is actually the amount of water that is residing in your system. And I, I wanna talk about that for, for just a few minutes because I, I think it's kind of important. Th this would represent absolute humidity. And, and what you really don't wanna do is you, you don't wanna get caught up in this because absolute humidity is not necessarily what you're after when you're storing your cigars, but this is just a representative example of it. And it kind of shows you about how tightly I can actually keep the water control inside, um, you know, inside the humidor versus uh, versus what other people can do. Um, but there's some there's some neat stuff about this. So let's uh, let's let's pop off here for for a real quick second. So um, Ray here stores at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit and about 60% uh, relative humidity. And this is the amount of water, basically, um, pounds of water per cubic foot of, of space inside my humidor. And since some of the space is gonna be taken up now by cigars, my humidors themselves run about six cubic feet. But remember, when you stack them with cigars, there's much less free space in there, and that's what this is, really has to do with. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the math on this real quick. So in this, in this um, cubic foot, okay, so pounds per cubic foot, so this is essentially one cubic foot. In this, in this number, there's not really a heck of a lot of water. I mean, look at this. This is how many pounds of water are in one cubic foot of air at 60 RH and 70 F, and, and this is not a lot. So that you can get kind of a, a better idea on what this really represents. Um, you, you know about the size of a drop of water. Well, that, th this equates to 6.44 drops of water. And this is an approximation because a drop isn't really an exact measurement. I, I've done this just kind of for your, for your sake and for amusement, but it's not a heck of a lot. I mean, 6.4 drops of water in one cubic foot of space at this RH. So there's not a lot of water in there. So when, you, when your system cycles on and you get this um, condensation on your cold plate and you get six drops of water for all intents and purposes, you, you really got not no heck of a lot of relative humidity left inside the system. So these are some of the arguments that I'm making about what kind of control you need over these systems in order to make them function the way, the way I make them function. There's just, there's, it's not like there's a gallon of water in there and you can afford to you know, lose two or three ounces of it. You can't. Um, there's only this much per cubic feet of space and it, it's not a lot. And that actually turns out to be uh, 4.83 grains of water. Uh, I use that to get a couple of calculations. So let's go back to the chart a little bit, and, I, and we're going to talk about one other thing real fast. Um, I think it's this chart I want to look at. This is an interesting chart. And Chris, this is actually going to show you why you've got, again, this escalating RH. Now you're going to say, well, Ray, what happened here? You, geez, your temperature went, your humidor stopped working. Well, yeah, actually it did. My humidor did stop working because uh, Edison was out and they replaced a... Uh, transformer on uh, on one of the telephone poles that's about 200 or 300 feet away from my property which actually feeds my property power so you know they sent me out a notice and said basically you're gonna get a brown out at 930 which I did and this killed every humidor along with everything else in my shop but the data loggers continued to run 
as they always do, of course. And so this is what happened that, you know, temperature went up in the, sh the temperature, of course, is, you know, always going up in the shop as the day gets a little bit later. So the temperature moved in this two and a half hour time frame from, you know, the 71 to eh, maybe not quite 72 degrees Fahrenheit inside the humidor. And then, which had kind of two effects, obviously, the amount of water increased as you can see in the relative humidity line here and actually you can see it even more in this line and this is uh, this is grains per pound of dry air so you can see that the water increased dramatically even though the you know the temperature also went up so this is your problem here chris is that uh, when the humidor gets turned off, you have this solid surface humidor, so you're naturally going to go up as long as there's free water inside, uh, in, inside your humidor. And um, so let's finish this up. The reason why I made this video for you, Chris, is so that you understand that you, 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 your humidor is just doing, your wine cooler is doing exactly what anyone else's unengineered and uh, space is going to do. Um, you know, again, just kind of blowing my own horn here, uh, my humidors are, are, are engineered and they have not only the engineering to support my systems, but they also have a lot of details put into uh, programming and controls. There's the technology that, that backs them up. And that's the reason why I get these little tiny fluctuations that the cigars never see. See, I don't get a straight line here because the humidor is constantly correcting. It's, it's constantly tweaking itself back and forth, trying to make sure that you get this really, really, you know, that you get this really, really small fluctuation. And, you know, so this is, this is a couple of RH. I mean, that's it. That's, that's all that's happening, you know, inside, inside my humidor. And you can't walk through your friggin' house without you know rh going all over the place so you know this is uh, this is quite an accomplishment so um again chris that's what you got to do strip everything out of the inside of your uh, of your of your humidor dry out your beads make sure that you don't have a pool of empty water left in there if you do sop it up turn the thing on its face or whatever get all the water out of it let it dry don't turn it back on. Introduce your beads when they've been reclimatized, and then go in there and test them. Um, of course, you realize that you will have stratification in your humidor. Every single tower type humidor does, which means you're going to have your more moist, warm air at the top of the humidor, and you're going to have your drier, cooler air down at the bottom of your humidor. And that's just the way it works. It's the reason why I run a bunch of fans in my systems. But if you don't have the cooler running, you're not going to be able to beat that heat so you really can't run the fans if you run fans in there what happens is they're going to they're going to catch all the residual heat because you do have an insulated space and then you're going to have you know then you're going to have this this higher heat problem which you probably don't want either so that's the long and the short of it uh, hey thanks for leaving me the note on um on my youtube site um hopefully this helped you out have a good day